Good afternoon, my name is Elliot Young and today I will be presenting the findings from my research paper Is it possible to redevelop lamella and airy properties ecologically? Briefly, what I will be going through in this short 8 minute presentation with you today is the aims of the completed research, the reasoning for completing said research, the methodology used throughout, I will then introduce both the lamella and airy structures through the use of a literature review, reviewing my professional experience on the dilemma then drawing from this a conclusion and reviewing said research. This research attempted to identify the most eco-friendly way of redeveloping both the melanary properties. The research questions are therefore, what are the current deficiencies within both property types? What are the possible ways of rectifying these defects? This draws us to the ultimate question, is it more practical to redevelop or demolish and rebuild in terms of impact on the carbon footprint? The reasoning for this research is due to the growing public concern for global warming. Can we afford not to update these uninsulated dwellings if we are to hit our government's proposal that the UK will be the first major economy to pass new laws to reduce emissions to net zero by 2050? Consideration of other factors such as cost, which might hinder development of these dwellings, has been considered throughout. But if you really think that the environment is less important than the economy, Try holding your breath while counting your money. Before research began, study of Cresswell and Cresswell 2017 was used to discover what the methodology would be best suited and came to these conclusions shown here. More information about the methodology used can be found within the research paper. The Meller properties were built between 1946 to 48 by F. Hills and Sons Limited. Meller properties have a distinctively shaped Lamella gable roof covered with tiles or metal sheeting, with projecting flat top dormer windows. This folded roof is made up of crisscrossing parallel timber short bands. These are hinged together and bolted to form an interlocking diamond structure. This is then covered with sarkin felt, battens and plain tiles. From the ground to the underside of the projecting eaves on the first floor, the construction is relatively commonplace, i.e. a no fines concrete slab with a 300mm thick masonry wall construction. This building type has following major issues. Deficiencies in fire stopping at eaves height and above, little or no thermal installation above the ground floor masonry covered wall structure, and the current structural instability of the supporting timber framework due to moisture ingress from poor water tightness. In relation to alternative non-traditional dwellings, there are relatively high airy properties, with 26,000 across the UK. Airy properties were constructed between 1945 to 55 by W. Airy and Sons Limited and R. Crustane Limited. These dwellings have a characteristic external wall of exposed aggregate pre-reinforced concrete panels throughout, with upper panels oversailing lower panels in a hang tile fashion. The corners of an airy property have splayed PRC column, uh, corner panels. This is in order to cover the story height tapered PRC columns, which have support the hanging panels. The British Research Establishment lists the three major structural de defects are cracking of these PRC columns, water penetration through the PRC column uh, panels, high chloride content in PRC panels, Following up on this, an in-depth study was carried out by the BRE in the early 1980s investigating fire damage to an airy house, which revealed cracking to the structural PRC columns caused by an inadequate cover to the embedded steel reinforcement and chemical changes to the surrounding concrete. For these reasons, the BRE have now labelled the building type to be designated defective. During my career, I have worked alongside a senior architectural technologist in a practice near Huddersfield. During my time at this company, notes were taken in my reflective diary, which was under review by supervisors. This section will ex extrapolate data from this work diary, focusing on three methods of development for uh, lamella properties. The first option for lamella properties is a redevelopment option with minimal work done as possible. Steps for these are, Firstly, removal of the existing roof finish. Secondly, galvanise straps fixed back 
into the existing lamella roof structure, straps to be built back into the gable wall as shown to the top left. Repair of the existing roof timber structure with like for like timber members. Fire stopping to be installed at the party wall to provide a form of fire compartmentalization between the two properties as shown top right. Insulation to be installed between the lamella grid system providing minimum 100mm thick insulation above the roof structure. Cover the, and then finally cover the lamella timber frame with the breather membrane roofing felt then counter batten using treated roof bands over the felt and finally reinstall the tiled roof finish. This can be seen in the final isometric drawing to the bottom. The second option requires more demolition. The steps for these options are existing timber lamella roof structure to be removed completely to wall plate level located at first floor. Steel purlings are then to be installed to span from gable wall to party wall to support the roof structure. Timber stud frame walls are to be constructed to first floor level uh, to, to create the lower section of the mansard roofs. Roof to be formed from loose rafters, roof to be strapped back to the gable and fire stopping to be fitted to the party wall line similar to option 1. Completed wall and roof construction to be insulated and clad in a breather membrane, then to be receive a roof tile finish similar to existing construction on treated timber battens. This option can be seen in the isometric and the section drawings shown to the right. The third and final option is to completely demolish and rebuild anew. Moving on to airy properties, results from the questionnaire shown in depth in the research paper, highlight the use of a structural external wall insulation or SEWI as a possible redevelopment option of lamella of airy properties. Following up on these fact following up on this, factory visits to a nearby SEWI company were carried out, and with their expertise, two major design possibilities for airy properties were developed. The first option is to use an SEWI with minimal works done. Steps for these are inspecting the existing concrete frame system for structural faults and repairing using a pie or similar concrete strengthening methods, thus repairing the PRC's columns and increasing the protection from fire damage. Then a structure therm or similar structural external wall insulation to be installed as shown on the step-by-step -step guide to the right. These panels are joined with rigid mesh which is mechanically clipped together to form a continuous monolithic structure system with, which stops movement in the walls and ties the property together, thus increasing thermal performance and the structural integrity of the property. The second development option for every properties is to completely demolish and rebuild anew. In conclusion, the research shown today highlights the disparity of the, these property types and current living standards and helps to identify the most eco-friendly way of redeveloping both lamella and airy properties as a way of promoting this issue of research and redevelopment of the industry. For airy properties, the solution is tentative because of the uncertainty of the ascertaining the PRC's structural damage. However, in my ideal situation, the concrete columns are in sound condition to repair and reinforce, then the redeveloping the property using an SEWI is the best option for an eco-friendly method of redevelopment. When developing the lamella properties, longevity does need to be considered as option one, redevelop existing building envelope is the most eco-friendly option. However, this does not increase the longevity of the dwelling due to the fact that the existing timber structure is retained for which little or no structural tests have been carried out. This draws us to the conclusion that the best option for lamella properties is to re-roof with a mansard roof construction method, thus ensuring the longevity of the property with no deficiencies to the installation provided at roof level. Yet because of this, it loses the characteristic bell-shaped gable of the house type. In review of the research, the initial aims of the research paper have been met, but not with significant evidence to definitely say what is the most eco-friendly way of redeveloping both the Mela and Eric properties. Due to the limitations of time and resources, these limitations render the research as a first path 
paths and possibilities for redeveloping and solving the existing UK housing crisis for non-traditional dwellings. This paper does, however, point out the current constraints and limitations for a more thorough feasibility study in the future. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch.